Greetings, brothers and sisters. It's been a while. Um, today I would like to touch upon another topic on necromancy. As many of you are aware, there are different aspects of the self while we are engaged in the spiritual, occult and magical arts. For example, you have what's known as the God Self. Okay, this is your most uh, divine, most prominent, powerful self. And you'll have people claim that they have a God name. Other people talk about their magical names, okay? So, for example, just to use an example, uh, let's talk about Curtis Joseph. Curtis Joseph's uh, magical name is Draconus, uh, or Draconis. Um, you have E.A. Coetin. Um, his magical name is Archelus. And then you have mine, which is Kavon. So, you have names like this. Um, during my working, my intense immersion into the path of necromancy, I came in contact with the Angel of Death, okay, Azrael. And during my, one of my evocations of Azrael, he appeared as a four-winged black angel, okay? And in his hands, he was holding a book, this astral, um, this astral record in his hand. And it's very important if you're an evocator and, and you've been studying or even performing evocation for years, you'll know that the appearance sometimes of the spirit is conveying a message. They are changing their appearance constantly. But a lot of the time, the appearance that they take is for a reason. Not all the time, but most of the time. And as Azrael held this book in his hands, his voice didn't emanate outward from his mouth as the norm with regular spirits. Instead, his voice emanated from the book itself. Okay? When I asked him about this, what he was holding in his hand, he said, this is the book of dead names. Okay? The book of dead names. Um, Azrael is known to keep a record of the names of the souls that are going to depart. Okay. Now, the dead name is the name given to, you could say, your shade, to the, the, your ghost or the essence of yourself, which will be torn away from the body. Okay. It isn't you. It's a, uh, it's a isolated aspect of you. Okay. So, I questioned him on these names. And I asked if my name was in there. And indeed it was, but it wasn't this name. It wasn't the name that was given to me from birth. It was the name that was given to my shade, uh, my, my first name, you know. I was interested in this. And, I, and Azrael kept touching upon this subject, like, like I was being drawn to it for a reason. The dead name is the name of the necromancer, okay? And once the necromancer has channeled this name and has this name, he or she only has to speak it. They can vibrate it as a mantra. They can just simply recite it like its own incantation, okay? Um, when you're working with spirits of the dead, whatever these spirits may be, or death gods or the undead gods, or whatever entities are in the necromantic path, and you place out your hand and you're commanding or compelling or, or, or willing something to happen, you often use your name, right? I've seen a dramatic difference when I use my regular name, the name which I was given through birth, and I even used my magical name, Kayvon, and then I used my dead name, okay? And you must never speak your dead name. You should only know your dead name. No one else should ever know your dead name, guys. This is extremely important. You are the only one who should know your dead name, okay? However, he wouldn't tell me my dead name. Um, he explained to me that that I, at the time I wasn't quite ready and that I had to undergo certain tests and certain initiations with him. And so I began my, tutored, my tutelage from the angel of death. And there, once I had passed my initiations, which... Once I had gone through the tests of, of um, proving my skills as a necromancer, for example, um, just one of the tests I'll give you an example of actually um, 
you know, finding a shade, uh, going to a cemetery, um, kneeling before a grave, uh, using that as the focal point, as the the um, the link to the essence of someone's uh, shade, pulling that shade up, creating an actual spiritual trap and uh, a soul trap, a shade trap, and then pulling the shade into that trap, binding it and holding it in that trap. And once that spirit's in that trap, you will take that home into your um, your necromantic altar, your dead altar, and you will place it upon this nexus, this uh, necromantic nexus. And over time, you can actually mutate the shade, okay? You can feed the shade, empower the shade, and you're actually mutating it um, as if you're performing some sort of spiritual surgery upon it, you know? You're manipulating it, it and you're making it an abominable creature. It's no longer a shade. It's something else entirely, something forbidden. And this powerful entity is now bound to you. It, uh, it serves you and it serves your becoming. But anyway, so, yeah, this is just to touch upon the dead name. Um, the dead name, I, I came to understand, is extremely important, guys. It's extremely important. Um, the dead name um, has a variety of uses, you know. Uh, you can use it to channel the powers of, uh, of death, um, to actually compel these entities to rise and to work with you. Um, so, yeah, this is touching upon the dead name. This is something I will be covering in the Necromantic Tome that I will be releasing soon, guys. This is just one aspect of it. And everything else that I spoke about, um, I'll be covering a, an array of things from working with um, Azjahi, from working with uh, Azrael, from working with Santa Muerte, uh, the Thragor, um, the various entities all across all different um, planes, realms, and cultures, I will be adding into this work. So yeah, guys, um, this is something that I just wanted to touch upon. I felt compelled by the, the spirits around me to touch upon this subject. And here's the video of it, guys. So I hope you have a great day and I hope you had a great holiday. And uh, till we meet again.